Pablo Jean. Hey guys, Mark Farash with ProTech Dog Training. We got Arrow out this morning, and for those of you who don't know Arrow, he is Rocky's father. And he is everything in, uh, you would ever want if you were going to military dogs or police, etc. Um, as far as his propensities for true dominant aggression and his drives, they're through the roof. And uh, I just had him out here running the ball a little bit because I didn't trust him to be able to lay down here and not give me hell and not get out of got to get out of hand. Now I can't put a, uh, any uh, mixed things in him. I wanted to get him out. Actually, to be honest with you, Rocky. I mean, uh, Arrow. Come here. I gotta be careful. Couche. Good. That's good. Um, to give you a little bit of background and history, I ended up going up to having a friend of mine that was a uh, is a dog broker, and he was up in the San Francisco area, and he gave me a call, and he knew I was looking for Dutch Shepherds, so he gave me a call, and he said that I wanted to come down there and, and drive, take a drive, and go see this dog if they were one step away from putting him uh, putting him down, and uh, because of his aggression, he was resource guarding on his owner, and she didn't know what she was doing in that regards. She did a great job with him with his obedience. You'll see that I've got a stem collar on him because he's got a great uh, conditioning with the stem collar. As far as him understanding, very uh, low, low uh, impulse so that he has a signal and he works very well with it. But his propensities and aggression were true dominant. The gentleman that, that called me up and got me up here was basically telling me the story that she really even couldn't go anywhere. The dog was so bad that she only could go up, out late at night and in the early morning time before anybody was out because she was so worried that this dog was going to nail somebody. And, and I introduced him. I always let people know that he won't just bite you, he'll maul you. He's uh, definitely got that... Uh, really pure aggression and pure dominance that he has uh, in his nature and uh, there's a breeder in France that I got the female from and, and he knows a lot of these lines so we we gave him the, the lineage and we sent him some videos and told him what his problem was and everything and he picked me a female to go with him and hopefully tone that uh, intensity down a little bit because as he said about her and the female that we brought over and she's got a great temperament but when they get wound up they uh, they go into extreme violence, and that's exactly what he does when he goes off on me and, and comes at me when I first got him. I'll tell you a little bit about the story. I first got him and I put him in that kennel. I gave you guys a video of that. And um, we ended up having some time period that we we started to learn what his propensities were. And one of those was very territorial in his kennel. And you go to put him inside the kennel and he will flip and come at you very, very strong. Again, extreme violence. It's not just a normal dog going off on you across the fence. The dog is, is telling you in a nutshell, that he's going to chew you up and so um, his propensity in that regard is very intense if you get on his bad side and you don't want to do it you'll end up getting into a fight to a point where you uh, end up in the hospital <laughs> and we did have that within the first few weeks that I had him he ended up uh, giving me hell because all I was doing was I was blocking him trying to tell him no don't come in the house and to try to get him to stay outside and I heard this guttural growl and all of a sudden he was at me and it was intense and very intense I've never had a dog come at me so strong and the fight was on he nailed me real good in the arm nailed me in the side tore my thumb up and I was lucky enough to be able to get control of him because I grabbed him underneath his jowls underneath the neck here and grabbed that fur and held on for dear life and pinned him into the corner picked him up and all that adrenaline coming from me uh, gave me the strength to be able to handle it but I just looked him in the eye and told him not get off and just really a lot of intense and, and he ended up finally not blowing his eyes to me he never showed me submission and he never has and he probably never will um, never cowed never did anything all he did was basically telling me in a nutshell okay you win now in other words I had the control he couldn't do anything about it and he's smart enough and intelligent enough to be able to understand that so he just gave up and then uh, growled at me and I was able to take him all the way back to the kennel and the whole way back he's pulling me back to that kennel he's growling the whole way at me and I got to that kennel door and I know his, his uh, propensities, his normal behavior traits, was going to be when I put him in that kennel, he was going to spin on that door and come back at me hard. So my mind went right away, how the hell do I get this dog into this kennel without getting torn up? Because this dog's going to go after it again, because this was his behavior loop that he had going on that kennel. Not anymore. He doesn't do this to me at all anymore. We have a great relationship. I can go in and he's pretty much all bonded with me. But again, if I put too much pressure on him, correct him, don't show him respect, he's going to nail me. But at, at that day, what I did is I just kind of gave a big old swing of the door and put it on the inside and as hard as I could threw him into the kennels get him back as far as I could into that kennel so I could handle him and he flipped at me hard and came at that door and we went through a whole process of uh, 
of bonding and, and a lot of different little things that I did to try to get his respect to a point that we have a good bond now. I can take him out and play with him and I can give him exercise. I can handle him for breeding and that's really what I wanted to do. But I really don't trust him out in public because he is uh, very, very dominantly aggressive. And he, again, for over two years of his life, his first two years, was resource guarding on her and was just totally intense. And so that behavior loop is going to be there. And I'm not really too into trying to go solve the whole thing and turn him into a productive uh, society member because all it takes is one flashback to that other behavior and he's going to nail somebody and I then have to put him down and I end up in a, in a situation in the court system. So I won't do that. I won't do it to him. It's not fair to him and it's not fair to whoever he ended up biting or whatever. He's just, he's, he's termed a dangerous dog. It's just, now, could I put the work into it and recondition this animal and get him out? I probably could, and he'd be probably 60%, 80% solved, but it's just that other percent that if he flashes, we got a problem. So this is, uh, again, Arrow, and he is Rocky's dad, and he definitely has that extreme aggression and does not play. And I, I love him for it because he... Uh, He's a gold mine in the sperm bank, huh, you? Huh, Arrow? Yeah, you good boy. And he works like a top. Arrow. Aussie. Goose. Good. Aussie. Oh, yeah. Good. Does all the spinning stuff and does all kinds. She did a great job with him. All right. Good boy. But, uh, again, she just didn't know how to handle this uh, rank aggression that he's got, this over-the-top intense aggression. Goose. Good. So we're going to have him making puppies for us, and we're going to turn out some good puppies, and then I'm going to test my theory, which is basically 60-40. In my opinion, genetics are 60% and 40%, meaning 60% is environment, 40% is that genetic package. And why that is is because if you have the skill to be able to do it and you raise the puppy properly and you're aware of the genetic propensities in the, in the, in the package as far as what he throws, you're able to condition, shape, form, just like a piece of clay, and, and shape that dog away from those propensities. Are they still going to be there? Rocky is just a chip off the old block. Rocky the puppy is a lot like his dad. Low threshold, uh, very keen to wind up real fast. And he's a hell of a dog, but at the same time, he had a lot of his dad in him that I was aware of that I've been working on since he's been a puppy. And we've gotten around most of it. He's very social. I've got him out with people, and, and that was important to me because he's not that way. So it was important for me to do that, and I do a lot of that even still now that I work him. Hey, you. Hey, you. Good. That's my boy. That's good. Yeah, no bubba, son. So... This is Rocky, excuse me, this is Arrow. I wanted to introduce you to him. I got him over about a year and a half ago, probably about a year and a half. And um, it's been a, a long haul that first three or four months, five months was something else. Very intense to get him to a point where I could handle him. I won't go into how we did that. It wasn't abusive. It wasn't uh, coming down him heavy and correcting him because you're not going to correct the dog into this, the, this stature and get him to, uh, to work for you. You got to come at him in different areas. He loves the ball, so we use the ball to get him to uh, do what we wanted to and we taught him a marker where basically you do what I want you to do and you will get your ball. So his vocabulary is through the roof. He understands exactly when I say ball, you want to play, you want to get a drink, look at this. He knows vocabulary is an intense amount of words that she had him doing. She had him all kinds of little fancy words and things that he was doing. So it was just that one side of him that she couldn't handle. Yeah, good boy. And his lines are, needless to say, KNVP lines right back to the old country, that's for sure. They uh, imported his dad over and they bred him here in North Carolina, I do believe is where his, his dad was at. And then she got him. And I really don't understand why some of these breeders are allowing these dogs to go out to the general public. And there's nothing wrong with the, the fact that the general public um, doesn't understand, doesn't have the knowledge base to be able to handle a dog like this. But it's real important to understand when you're overmatched and you get a dog like this and the dog's going to wind up as a puppy because you don't know what you're doing. And you'll end up in the pound and you'll end up getting put down. It's not fair to the dog because it has, it's no fault of the dog, to be honest with you. It's just a lack of education and a lack of understanding. This is something that I do every day of the week and this is my life and I've been doing it since I was 12. So because of that, I have a lot more uh, ability than most people to understand and be able to deal with this stuff. So. 
that's my only my only feeling about it. And uh, you heard you saw Mike's video that he did a while back talking about um, branding of uh, social stigmas and branding dogs like pit bulls and, and and all that kind of thing. And I agree with him. But I when you get a dog like this with these kind of propensities and this kind of breeding stamp, the genetics in them. Um, that's been bred for like 200 years and they're getting even more into it um, as far as really one of these tough dogs to go into the military and go into special forces and stuff. Um, they're intense. They're definitely not for the layman and they're not for the general public as far as I'm concerned and that's my personal opinion but I would never sell one of his puppies to somebody that didn't know what they were doing because they were only gonna, you're gonna ask for trouble and the dog's gonna end up getting put down. It's not, not fair to the animal. So I'll see you guys later and uh, we'll talk to you soon. Thank you, bye bye.